Hello viewers! In this episode I'll be taking the Machine Tribe out for a second spin, while I stop some of the Death Force's lower stakes plots. Like this opening one here, where the game tries to play up as a big secret by not showing you who you're fighting and making you fight alone. Let's do this! Luckily for me, it's just a swarm of Death Force betas. Do it! I'm opening against them with Army Robot here. Not too big a deviation from the Claw Robot standard, though uses bullets in place of missiles, and comes with a pack of oil drums, which you can drop with the X button. You start with 10, and the ammo for them only recovers when one is destroyed, which these betas can't really do as they lack projectile attacks. With good placement of them, you can make the stage a lot more difficult to navigate for non-flying Borgs, especially in a stage like the Marketplace, which is already kind of cluttered to begin with. Nice. You can use the drums to deal damage, as you might have saw back there, but seeing as they're thrown in the direction that Army Robot is facing, as opposed to the direction of a locked-on target, like most attacks, it's a bit difficult to use them as such. Generally, they're just used as a bit of temporary cover. Yes! Army Robot here is strong enough to take these betas out in a single volley or melee attack. Though it doesn't mean I can get sloppy, as if more than one is around, I'll probably get hit out of it. So I want to keep my distance and spread them out a bit. Yeah. As well, these betas aren't too much of a threat to Army Robot with his high HP, a more fragile Borg would definitely have some trouble, especially if they got surrounded. Yeah. Yeah. You see, while they don't do much damage, the Death Borg betas can score knockdowns pretty easily. And as such, letting them close in on you can make the battle last a bit longer. Good. Yeah. I'm saving my power burst up for a bit later, just as this group is already thinned out a bit, and it'd be kind of a waste to have it just sitting around while waiting for the next group to warp in. Yeah. Ah, that was a nice dodge, but I couldn't repeat it. Thankfully, invincibility frames kept them from capitalizing on it as well. Yes. Yeah. I pop power burst here and make it go a little faster. And you see, while the enemy's force has been shipped down significantly, they haven't managed to take out a single board of mine. Did you see that little projectile there? Near the end of the battle, they bring in a single Death Borg Beta 2, which has only projectile attacks as opposed to Beta 1's solely melee attacks. Still, it's just as fragile as the rest of them, and goes down just as quickly. And with that, it's game for us. We showed them. Good on you, Army Robot. You deserve that. Unfortunately, there weren't any prizes from that, so we move on to an oddly placed boss battle. I guess they're just trying to mix it up a bit after the Death Force invasion. I wanted to use the seal last episode, but couldn't because our melee borks will class too much. I'm opening with Isaac here, which is Nick, uh, Kitsune's partner. He's a modified claw robot. Now, this battle's a little strange, as it's a pair of demon samurai accompanied by a swarm of endlessly respawning death bombs. And while the death bombs can do a good chunk of damage if you lose track of them, the real danger is letting the demon samurai sit behind their obstacles for um, too long. Now, while they won't move until they're attacked, every death bomb that explodes makes their swords longer. 
And while that doesn't increase their damage, it does make it a lot harder to get in on them, and makes it a lot easier for them to hit you. Yeah! Ah, it's surviving on a magic pixel here, and I'm probably going to pay for that, especially when you whiff. And you can see how it managed to smack me around from way off to the side. Luckily, I managed to close in with invincibility frames. Uh, but a death bomb manages to take out Isaac. Uh, next up is Magnet Robot Minus. And while we've seen Kitsune's Magnet Robot Plus, uh, Minus here doesn't get too much of a chance to shine before it begin. Yeah, that odd cut tends to happen when the Borg that scores the winning hit is destroyed, and it can't zoom in. Next up, we'll take on an Angel Borg unit. And we start in with the big machines. Starting with Proto Blue here. Let's go! Now, all the big machines tend to have special abilities. And while their prototypes don't have those abilities, they're generally the same, just with a slightly lower point cost. Proto Blue here is basically a big gun Borg. Uh, complete with the same punch kick melee attack. Yes. And while a stage like the pit is custom made for wing borgs, yes. Proto Blue's long range attacks generally help even the playing field a bit, so it's not quite as one sided as it would be. Good. Though me using a big machine against a bunch of death borgs is kind of unfair to begin with. See, while Proto Blue's missiles are generally suited to mid range combat with their slow speed, his heavy shell shoulder cannon is pretty good at any range and does a good chunk of damage, especially to these Valkyries, which don't have the best HP or defense to begin with. I can't even cross the full pit on my jump. Uh, but that blue ball means our old friend Slow Valkyries here. And I'm already a big enough target, I don't need to be moving slow to help them out at all. Yeah. I don't really pop Power Burst here, as these groups are too small to really get good use out of it. And most of it will just be spent waiting for the next group to warp in. Nice. Still nice of Wind Valkyrie to present a stationary target for us. And that, you see, is why Punch Kick is kind of a poor melee attack. That's why when using, like, Proto Blue and other gun boards, you want to generally want to keep your distance. Of course, if the computer knew about flight canceling, that would probably be a lot more difficult. But seeing as they don't, this is really just shooting skeet. I'm focusing on that slow Valkyrie again, because I really don't want to get slow. Seem to be bringing in a lot of them. It's mostly slows and rings. I think I've seen one quit, a few tornadoes, and wind. Oh, she managed to get inside my blind spot. But it's not enough, and that's game for us. We showed them! Finally, get a battle with some prizes. Uh, Slow Valkyrie Crystal. And another Ring Valkyrie. Um, this here generic Death Force fight is even more of a route than the battle against the Angel Borg was. So I cut most of it out and just left a few highlights. I'm using Proto Red. And he'll get 
a bit more of a showcase later on, though it'll most likely be his Descendant Machine Red that gets the greater focus. Yeah, Proto Red and Machine Red has some vicious combos. And if it's reminding you of anyone, that are in fact related to G-Red. Though of course, G-Red isn't quite that vicious. We showed them. <laughs> you got Don't front Nikobe, that was all red. Seems some more interesting fights have shown up. That'll take out this Death Force. Again, just leaving some highlights. Just to build up a little more GF energy. This time I'm using Proto Panther. And while Proto Panther isn't quite as overbearing as Proto Red and Blue were, he's still really good against these enemies. While his standard B attack of Panther Vulcan is pretty terrible, and you really only use it because you're hitting the button to use your melee attack, his wheel X attack is quite good. It doesn't pierce everything, but it does go through enemies and does a lot of damage. And of course his melee attacks are really his bread and butter. Especially against smaller boards. We showed them! Alt-colored Shuriken Ninja. And another Tornado Valkyrie. Yeah, at least it's something. Well, next up seems Orochi's decided to ask for a rematch. I figure I'll bring in our other machine specialist and can double up. I'm opening with Magnet Robot, same as Kitsune. And while you think that would clash, we managed to stay out of each other's way well enough. Though, Orochi gives me a lot more trouble than Kitsune has with that Omega there. I just can't seem to get the rain fight. No, once I do, you can see the damage that a machine board can do. Especially with those heavy melee attacks. And Magnet Scope manages to keep her from getting too far away from me, though, as a Demon Samurai, she wouldn't want to anyway. Next up is where she's Teleport Ninja. You can see I've almost taken her out with one combo. Though I did just kind of put her in perfect position for a Teleport Slash with my Magnet Scope. Oh, and with bad placement, thanks to Kitsune, I managed to knock him out of the way. No, I guess I did save him from enemy hits, so it balanced a bit. Oh, Marochi's Ghost Knight manages to take out my Magnet Robot, and gets revenge killed by Megaton Robot. His X attack, Megaton Hammer, is incredibly powerful, though that's balanced by the fact that you have to retrieve the hammer after every toss. You can locate it with the ally targeting, so, and because it does get knocked off after every time you're knocked down, being able to do that makes it so you don't lose track of it. It can regenerate on its own, but it's incredibly slow, and really the only way to reliably use it more than once is to go retrieve it. Well, Orochi's already down to death, right? I can't seem to get another Megatoss in. And unfortunately, it seems the bodyguards have arrived along with their, the enemy's second power burst of the match. A power burst would make that Megaton per hammer regenerate faster, but really I don't want to use it here, especially as Megaton Robot's already taken a good chunk of damage. And you can't really rapid toss it out like you could most attacks. 
Megaton Hammer is well worth its defects in the damage it does. And those Sapphire and it took him out. Uh, next up comes Build Robot to finish the job. Well, Build Robot is a lot like Magnet Robot Minus, in that he's basically the same as Army Robot, but uses beams in place of bullets. Weirdly enough, Army Robot requires crystals, even though Build Robot has a higher GF energy cost. Yeah, still, we're coming up on the end, and given that we outnumber Orochi now that our bodyguards are gone, this is probably going to be our victory. And a melee attack of Build Robot clinches it. And with that, the Death Force Commander is now 0 for 2. Hmm, a uh, Sapphire Knight Crystal. Nice. And a Ghost Knight, our very own. Now that's quite generous. Not the last battle of the episode. It will be another fight with Show. What better way to celebrate our victory against Orochi? This one is tough. You're gonna lose. Ordinarily, hitting one of the slow robots against the Wingborg, especially Garuda, would be heavily imbalanced in the Wingborg's favor. But Magnet Scope manages to level that playing field a bit. Unfortunately, I can't really win if it comes to a battle of projectiles, as his are way better than mine. As such, I have to use Magnet Scope to try and bring him in, as melee attacks are my only real chance of dealing decent damage. Yep, I got Greedy trying to close there, but I cannot let Garuda fly away. While he usually turns away from the magnet scope, he flew into it and used it to his advantage. And that's the end of Magnet Robot Minus. Not as good as I'd hoped, but a decent performance against Garuda nonetheless. Uh, next up is Proto Atlas, another prototype of the big machine Borgs. Another gun Borg, like Proto Blue was. Though he uses lasers in place of missiles and shoulder cannons. He also comes with remote guns. Although they can be difficult to use as they use the same ammo as your main shot. And when they run out, they'll still move around even though they don't have any ammo to fire. And with Garuda surviving on a magic pixel, He's definitely doing a number on me. Especially seeing as my remote guns will come back if they get hit. Even with the power of Cyber Atlas and getting softened up by Magnet Robot Minus, you saw Garuda did a number on him. And while Wing Soldier is not much of a threat on its own, I definitely can't afford to get sloppy. Not with Blade Wing coming. Saving the power burst, specifically for Blade Wing. Oh, well, that was odd. But fortunately, the computer does not flight cancel. And as such, Wing Soldier is a lot easier to deal with than, say, it would be otherwise. Oh, some show brought out a jet hero. Strange that while Orochi's force hadn't really changed at all since the last time we saw her, uh, Sho's force has doubled in size. I'd like to leave a few of those power scopes out for when Wingborg, when Blade Wing shows up, but I can't guarantee they'd be in a useful place for me, 
or that they wouldn't benefit him more, so I just kind of use them up as soon as they come. And I finally pop Power Burst against Bladewing. I cannot afford to let Bladewing close in on me. And unfortunately, if he wanted to, he could do it easily and there wouldn't be much I could do to stop him. But thankfully, he seems content to let me set the range. Well, of course, this is still a hard fight nonetheless, as I cannot afford to be hit with my blade toss. His fire shot projectiles do too much damage to let too many of them hit me. Though of course those are always preferable to blade toss as that would probably KO me right now. Take this. You see I haven't used any remote guns since Power Burst ended as the ammo does not last long enough for it to be of any real use. Especially against a tougher Borg like Blade Wing. Again, surviving on a magic pixel. And it comes down to one last shot. Fortunately, I managed to win that quick draw. That was a fight. And all we got out of it was a wing soldier. I should make a t-shirt. Still, that's the it for now. Thanks for watching.